Uh, yeah, last week uh, we started discussing uh, yeah solving first order nonlinear ordinary differential equations, right? Right. So we discuss what the a differential equation is. Uh, we know how to check the linearity of the equation. Uh, we can, yeah, so mainly, yeah, so we may mainly focus on first order differential equations, especially initial value. That means uh, uh, initial value. Yep, so, some, so why, let's say, why is uh, unknown, it's an unknown function? Why is an unknown function and x is the independent variable? So we know nothing about y, but uh, so so we have an equation. So let's say this is a first order differential equation. Yep, so y prime. Uh, so it is a function. Yeah, you can rearrange the equation to get this slope function. So this slope function is a function of x and y. Yep. So this f is the slope of your solution, a family of solution, a solution curves. If you specify this initial value, initial value, let's uh, let's say y is unknown. It's unknown. Uh, let's say we know something about well, so let's, something about this y at certain point, let's say x naught. Yeah, this value is naught. Then, yeah, we can use a uh, numerical yeah, techniques or methods to obtain approximate, yeah, approximate solutions to this uh, to this initial value problem. So this uh, this system is called initial value problem. So this is the equation with the condition. So this condition is, is specified, right? That uh, this one is called the initial value problem. Yep, so we can solve this initial value problem uh, using uh, several numerical techniques. Uh, we, discussed uh yeah very simplest method uh we discussed uh which which is uh yeah which was uh Euless method yeah or oilless method well we start off with uh oilless method yep so let's see yeah this is the so let's uh visualize the problem right so this is uh, Yep, so let's visualize the problem. Okay, right. This is the independent variable x. And, and oh no, I will this time I will take t, right? Because uh, yeah, so here t, yeah. yeah. So so my independent variable is t and dependent variable. So why is the dependent variable depend that depends on t, right? Okay, right. So okay, this is uh, let's specify the initial point. Yeah. So this is the yeah. So t not initial. So we know something about that unknown function at this point. Yeah, so it is specified. Yeah, so otherwise we cannot use numerical methods. I uh, yep, so it is given y of t naught. Yeah, or we just say with t no y sub zero. Yep, so y sub zero. Y of yeah, y sub zero. Yep, so y sub zero. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So y sub zero, y of t naught. Let's uh, let's consider t naught. Yeah, uh, let's uh, name this here. Yeah. So this is the left hand. So we are interested in this interval. 
Yeah, we are interested in obtaining solution in this interval. So A is this end, left end, and this is the right end, okay. First, you had to identify this interval, perhaps, yeah, so or which interval uh, uh, you want to uh, obtain solution, uh, you want to find this unknown function, right? So first, uh, yep. Yeah, so yeah, identify this interval. Uh, so this is the so this is the interval we are interested in obtaining the solution. Solution y, right? Okay. Yeah. So we know. Yeah. So this n, yeah, it is specified. Yeah. But we know nothing about that unknown function here. So we will find, yeah, we will get approximate yeah, solution to that initial value problem. So how do you start? How do you start? You discretize, yeah, you discretize this interval a, b into subintervals. Uh, you can divide into smaller, yeah, that depends on the number of subintervals in this uh, interval, yeah, so let's say, let's find the length of the original interval, what's the length, b minus a, yeah, so b minus a would be the length of the original interval, we divide this original interval into n, let's say in general, into n number of sub interval, n number of equal size, equal size, right, equal size, so we split, uh, this original interval into equal size, perhaps small, small subintervals. Then you can find because these are equal lengths, right? so these are equal lengths. Then you can find the length of each subintervals by dividing the number of subintervals you included in in this original interval. So let's say, let's assume we have n number of, yeah, n number of equal size sub intervals. Yeah. Then this gives you the length of each sub interval. I will denote it as h, right? h is the length of each sub interval, h, 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 h. this length, this length. Equal, equal, so H, H. Right. So then, then you can find, yeah, so this one, yeah, this is D naught plus H or A plus H, anything, yeah. So this is, yeah, D naught plus 2H like that. Right. Da, da, da. This one, D naught plus N H. Yeah. Wow. Okay, we discretize the original interval. So, we, right, yeah, we introduce this mesh. You know, we can say, yeah, one dimensional mesh. mesh right? Then we find uh, approximate solution at each, yeah, at each point. Yeah, so, so start with this. And so, you know, this point, T naught, comma, Y naught, right? So initial point is this, that is that T naught. So this is even a very simple method. Why not? Why not? Yeah, this is the initial point. Let's find the next uh, point, it's, but we know the X coordinate, uh, T coordinate, which is this. Well, let's find the approximate uh, Y point. Yeah, approximate y point. So how do you find? Yeah, you can find. Yeah, so this point is given. Yeah, initially given, right? So uh, you know the slope function. Yeah, slope function. Yeah, so what is? So this is our equation. Y prime is equal to f x. Oh, we use t, right? Not x. Yeah. T is our independent variable. T and dependent variable is what? Yeah, so we have 
slope function, if you plug this point into the function, you know the slope at that point, right? Yep, so slope. I will it is drawn in, uh, in a different color. Yeah, so this is the slope uh, uh, at that point. Yeah, so this is the slope. Yeah, so slope is f of t naught comma y naught, right? It is this slope. Then if you have this point, uh -huh, t naught plus h, yeah. So you can find this y1. Yeah, so y1. Yeah, so y1. So y1 uh, can be computed uh, using this uh, equation y1 is. Yeah, so you know, so rise. Yeah, so this is the rise y1, y1 minus y0 rise divided by. So this is the approximate, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, slope, yeah. So y1 divided by, y1 minus y0 divided by the, by this, this run, run is h, h does not change, yeah, run h. Yeah, this should be approximately equal to your so, Yep, so, yep, so, because, yep, so this one is equal to, because, see, yeah, we join this, yep, then we get this triangle, rectangle. So, rise divided by run, run is h, rise is y1 minus y0, uh, then this is equal to, yep, so f of t0, yep. So, by rearranging this, yeah, you can find, Y one, yeah. So this is H F T not plus no T not comma Y not yeah, Y not. Okay. So right. So we obtain this approximation. Yeah. So Y one. So this uh you get. You get a good approximation when you reduce the step size, right? So today we will analyze that, right? Today, yeah, we will show that uh -huh. if you reduce the step size, so this is the step size. So we uh, remember we split the original into only to equal size, equal size sub -intervals. So. So you can say, yeah, this is step size. Yeah, this is the first step, second step, third step, and n step. Right? So each set, yeah, yeah. So each the yeah length of each sub or yeah is is the same is the same which is equal to yeah it is equal to n h right. So if you reduce this, uh, yeah, so if you reduce this H, run, run, this is the H. Yeah, so this uh, step size, you can obtain a yeah, better approximation to the solution of the initial value. To the solution of the uh, yeah, initial value problem. Yeah, so we will, uh, yeah, going to show that. So this is the recap. Yep. So start off with this. And this is the length of each sub interval. Yep. So, right. Uh -huh. Yep. So these are the points T not T1 is T not plus H T2 is yep. So you can yeah, T1 plus H so T not plus 2 H or so and so forth. Yep. So yeah, so, right, so, yeah, so this is clear, right? Yeah, and we can find H1. Yeah, so let me, there's a question. Okay, so, yeah, this is clear, right? We So this is the approximation, 
y sub 1 y sub 1 is the approximation to which one y of y of so this let's uh, do you know this is t1 and t1 this is t2 t sub 2 plus t sub 2 yeah so y1 is is an approximation to y of y of t1 right so yeah yeah so y1 is an approximation to y of t1 y of t1 is the exact but here we compute that approximation so that depends that approximation depends on h if you consider small h you get better approximation right and you get uh, something which is close to y of t sub one. Otherwise, you get weird, yeah, weird approximation. Okay. So now, yeah, now the second step. Yeah, so we obtain this approximation. So we already know we have an error here. Yeah? So let's say. So let's say this is the solution. This is the solution, solution I will draw in green color. Okay, we are going like this. Uh, okay, yeah, this is the solution. Okay, here look at the error, yes. Yeah, this is the error. So y1, y sub one is the approximation. Yeah, this one is the exact. Y of yeah, y of T one. Yeah, look at the difference between exact and exact and approximate one, right? So we know we know there's another yeah, there's another yeah, so I will, I will answer this question in seconds, right? I have to, yeah, clean this, yep. Yep, so we know, so here we know, we look at this, uh, this one. Yep, so, so we know, yeah, so we know there's an error for us to enable us to the compute the next iteration. Yep, so we know there's an error here, but uh, using this approximation, we compute the next approximation, okay? So we know there's an error. So that's why we have to analyze the error, error, error. We have to analyze not only the local, local means a one-step error, but also the global. We have to compute the we have to analyze the investigate the all errors total error so this is a uh, error yeah so when you compute a uh, y1 so this is this is called local error or one step error yeah so there's a yeah, difference between exact and the approximation y1 so this is called the local error Total error or global error is the yeah, is the total error. So you have to compute all errors. Yeah. This error plus and uh, we 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 always consider the quantity, the magnitude. Like right? you want the magnitude. What is the magnitude of this error? You have to magnitude of this plus magnitude of that. Magnitude, magnitude, or a number of yeah. So so we compute n number of uh, approximations. So, so if you sum that up, if you sum those magnitudes, so we get the total of global error. So this is called a local error, right? So let's find the local error first, right? Okay. So when you perform, yeah, using this initial uh, as the coordinate, yeah, so this is the initial coordinate, T0, comma, Y0, yeah, 
we compute using that we compute y1 so what is there yeah so let's compute that so this is the analysis yep. so okay you see yeah so i will use a different color so i'm sure that no now t not so this is t1 t1 the same t t not plus h yeah which is this length. Step size, right? Right, so, okay, here you have K, why not? Aha, uh -huh. why not? K, okay. right, so using this, I want to find an approximation. Yep, so why don't you write a tail expansion? around this point yeah so yeah let's uh, write the tail expansion of uh, y around t naught yeah. so what is the tail expansion y of so so yeah so t so so first one is uh, y of t naught around t naught. Yeah, y of t naught. Next one, y prime of t. Yeah, so y, uh, oh, what is the tail expansion? Yeah, so I think they are, yeah, let's find them. Yeah, so, Yep, so yep, so t minus t naught factorial one. No? Yep, so let's assume let's assume y is uh, infinitely or at least two or three. Yep. Yeah, infinitely many differentiable or otherwise you cannot write a tail expansion, right? Now at least let's say a yeah, couple of Terms, yeah, let's assume uh, this uh, differentiable up to yeah, a certain point, that's why. Yep, so double derivative, yeah, you can find double derivative on, on this interval. Yep, so let's assume this differentiable. Let's uh, twice differentiable, yep, so then you can compute this derivative. Minus t naught squared, and so, so yeah, so you know, yeah, da, 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 right, right. Okay, in generally, yeah, in generally, my nth derivative, yep, nth derivative, t minus t naught n power to the power n. Factorial n plus da, 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 infinitely many. Let's assume y is infinitely many. Okay, this is the tail expansion. If you, yeah, so if you want to uh, approximate, if you want to get a value, so approximate value at this point t1 yeah let's substitute t1 let's plug this t1 into the tail expansion yeah uh, let's plug mm -hmm. plug 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 plugging into the yes yep let's plug okay so this is the exact right exact if you consider, if you keep all terms in this uh, tail expansion, yeah, all terms, if you keep all terms in the tail expansion, so you get the exact solution. So this is the exact solution, right? Okay, so y of, y of t1. 
But if you truncate this infinite solution, yeah, let me, yeah, let me, yeah, simplify this further. Yeah, what is this? T1 minus T, yeah, T1 minus T2, what is this one? The, what is the gap between T1 and T2? Yeah, anybody? So what is this? It might be, oh, yeah. That might be uh, H, H. Yeah, here, yeah. difference between T1 and T2. So when you, yeah, take the difference and you subtract T1, yeah, T0 from T1, you get H, right? H, H. Yeah, let's uh, put H also here. Uh, so this is H, 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 and this one also, this is H squared, yeah, so, yeah, so, so, yeah, so this is H squared over 2. Also, okay. This is H to the power n divided by divided by H to the power n divided by factorial n. Da, da, da. Okay. If you consider this, uh, if you consider all terms in the Tail expansion, it is equal to the exact. This is the exact solution, right? Exact. But if you look at that, yeah, so so this is same with, yeah, this is same with what? This is same with, so we specify the initial uh, condition. Yeah, what is this? Y of T naught. Y of T naught, yes, what is that? So we use the notation Y zero, yeah, Y sub zero. Okay, that's it. Okay, if you truncate this infinite yeah, series at certain point, yeah, so if you truncate this, yeah, there's a difference between the exact and, yeah, so so let's truncate this infinite series at this point, then, so some of these two, yeah, so this would be, uh, this is same with, what is this? This is same with, yeah, so look at this, look at this, y prime is this, then y prime, so y prime at at t1 is this, and other one is y not, uh, no, yeah, yeah, right, so, so this is same with f t1 comma, is this why you why that should be that should be why one no oh why not why not uh, no 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 that should be give me a second uh, why not ah uh, that's right. Yeah, so lamp should have to, have to, why not, why, yeah, why, ah, sorry, sorry, yeah, so this should be, yeah, give me a second, I think I made a mistake, yeah, so this, yeah, tail expansion, Give me a second. Yeah, this should be you. You are saying here, 
Glad to see you're all right. Uh, let me think. Uh, Now, do not. Yep, so I do. Yeah, so let me pause this. I'm thinking. Yeah, this should be. Yeah, so this is correct. Yep, so Y of T, tail expansion of Y around T naught is this. Yep, around T naught. Yeah. Yep, so I made a mistake here. Y double prime T naught, yeah, T minus T naught squared over factor. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's why I'm, I always say you are the, yeah, you are, you are a genius. Yep. So, well, you learn in numerical analysis. Yep. Thank you, Lakshika. Yep. Yep, so, yep, so, right, that's right. Well, yeah, this is correct, yep, so this is correct. Then, uh, then this would be a T, yeah, so this would be, this would be a T naught, why not? Is that correct? Or oh, this would be F prime T naught F of I naught. Yeah, this is F to the N minus one. Yeah, so N minus one T naught. Yeah, I naught. Yeah, this one. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I feel the blood. If you go to, here we go. Yeah, so you are right there. Yeah. yeah. Here we go, yeah. The y prime of T naught and y double prime of T naught times T minus T naught squared or factor two and so on and so forth. Right, so, right. Okay. We have that infinite series. If you consider all terms in the in this Taylor series, you uh, that Taylor series converges to exact solution. Yeah, so exact solution is this. Okay, but if you truncate this infinite series at at this place, so there's a difference between exact and Taylor. So Taylor expansion. So what is the difference? Yeah, so if you consider first two terms of the Taylor expansion, let's write that down. Why not? Plus why not plus f of yeah, so f of yeah, f of t naught comma y naught. And 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 and, and H, H, I mean, yep, so, so uh, let's denote this is a equal to y sub one, but so here this is the exact and this is the approximation. So we consider only first two terms of the tail expansion, then there there is an error. Yep, so what is the error? The error between exact so this is the exact and this is the approximation aha uh -huh. so we need the magnitude we all, always consider the quantity yep so what is the error? error between this yeah so error so the next term is this term yeah first derivative of f times h Squared and the other term, second derivative of f, yeah, times h cube and so on and so forth. If your h is small, 
So this is the dominant term, right? This is the dominant term. Let's say it goes less than one. Yeah, let's uh, let's assume H is very small. Then this is the dominant term. Um, yeah, so this one is difference between the exact and the approximation is 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 is, is yeah, is yeah, less than magnitude of of prime. You know, yeah, so H squared. Yeah, something. Yeah, let's uh, let's put capital. Yeah, some constant, positive constant. Yeah, so let's look at the norm. Yeah, so yeah, so we put like this. There, if you truncate the at a certain place, if you truncate the tail expand, infinite tail expansion at a certain place. So then there's an error. So what is the error? So exact, exact is, is equal to all terms, all infinite terms of the tail expansion. But if you consider first two terms of the tail expansion, yeah. So there's a difference between exact and the approximation. And the error between these two is, is dominated by H squared, right? So let's assume, yeah, let's assume this is uh, differentiable and finite. So let's assume F prime, yeah, so let's assume, yeah, we have to assume that, yeah, so we have to assume, so this is bounded, this is bounded in this interval. So otherwise, yeah, so, so let's assume, yeah, so this is bounded on this interval, yeah, so on this interval. Otherwise, uh, if this is unbounded, yeah, uh, we can uh, talk about an upper bound of the error, right? So let's assume, yeah, let's assume, yeah, so we have to assume this. Uh, yeah, so first derivative of, yeah, first derivative of, yeah, first derivative of slope function is bounded on this interval, on this interval, right? Uh, then we can uh, get an upper bound, get an upper bound for error. So, so basically the x, uh, the error is bounded by the, uh, the order of, uh, what is the order of this uh, error? Order is h to the power. Yep. So, yep. So, the error, the order of this error. This is the exact and approximation. So, this contains only two terms of the first two terms of the tail expansion. This contains infinitely many terms, right? So, the the difference, the quantity or magnitude of these two is bounded by yeah, so is yeah is is order of h two so this is the local error this is the local error right so you can say yeah so that means yeah that means so this one uh, the difference, uh, if you execute one time, if you execute, uh, if you if you compute uh, using the previous uh, point, uh, this is the previous point. If you use this uh, previous point to compute the next iteration or compute the next approximation, so the error between the exact and the approximation is is order of h to the power, the power two, right? If you reduce, uh, if you reduce uh, the step size, yeah, you can reduce this error, right? So it is reducing, yeah. So with this uh, order, yeah, h, h to the power two. 
So that's why. So if you reduce H, yeah, you can reduce the difference between exact and the approximation. Got it? Any questions? Mm. All right. Yeah, so this was the local error. So the difference between exact and the approximation is almost h to the power of 2, right? Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to discuss the global or total error, right? For that, I need this uh, definition. The problem must be your equation. This differential equation must be in order to compute the global error. OD or your first order OD should be well pose. So what is this well pose? Right. So let's discuss uh, if the differential, if your differential equation is well pose. It means uh, it is stable with respect to perturbation in initial data. Do you get that? Here, so here this Y1. So if you uh, do the Euler method, right? <clears throat> so Y1, Y sub 1, this one, Y sub 1 is not exact solution, right? It is the perturbation of initial. So so this is the exact solution here. Y of T1 is the exact. Y sub 1 is the, is the approximation, right? If you put, so this, yeah, if you put, so this is the perturbation. Y is the perturbation. Y sub 1 is the perturbation. There's a difference between this initial and Y1, right? If, uh, what does this mean? If this equation is well posed, is it is stable with respect to perturbation in initial data? That means, yep. So, so yeah. if you start off, uh, so let's say this is your initial data exactly. So, let's say this one is y of t1, and the other initial data is y sub 1. Right. Yeah, if you start off with this, you get a solution. Yeah, you get a solution curve. If you start off with this initial condition, y sub 1, so this is y sub 1, so you get another solution curve, right? Okay. So if you put, so then, so this is the solution curve to the, curve to the this initial condition, this is the solution curve to the this initial condition. Yeah, you get two different solution curves, right? So if the if your equation is well posed, right, the magnitude of these two solution yeah does not exist. Yeah, this quantity here. See, yeah, there exists a constant C. Yeah, that depends on, yeah, uh, the depend, independent variable. Yeah, such that the difference between magnitude of uh, one of, yeah, magnitude of these, yeah, difference between these two solution, yeah, does not exceed uh, C times this difference, difference between initial conditions, right? So here we assume our problem is well posed, then you can compute the global error, right? So, so right, then you can compute the global error. So this is the perturbation of, so, yep, so now we consider so this is the exact solution, y of t1, and this one, this one is the approximation. So you get two different yeah, solutions. Right? If it is well posed, yeah, that difference, 
is bounded by yeah some constant time this uh, difference yeah this error right if the problem your equation is well posed right so uh, you need that condition to compute the global uh, or total error right okay total error would be yeah total error would be yeah let's compute the total error yeah so here we have total error and this is the yeah so we computed let me do yeah we computed the number of intervals n is the number of intervals yeah and the length of the original interval is b minus a divided by the length of each each sub interval h right so the total error yeah would be yeah this so I have uh, yeah. So here we are here. So with this initial condition, this is the x, but we get this approximation. You get the difference. This is the error. This is the exact, and this is the approximation. Uh, with this error, we find the next iteration. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, yeah. So this is the next uh, yeah iteration. But so we know we know there's an error here at the beginning, right? So here there's an error, but we oh, but we use the uh, Euler method to compute the next iteration, right? So with this error, yep, so for this initial condition, we have this solution, right? Okay. All right. So then uh, using this initial point, yeah, yeah, so then we find the next iteration. And this is the error. So exact, this is exact, y of t2, and this is the approximation. This one is the approximation, y sub 2. Yeah, this is there at the second stage. This is there at the first stage. Yeah. y of t1, and this one is the y of y sub 1. Yeah, so, okay, so if our problem is well posed, so that means the solution curves. So this solution curve, this is the, uh, this is what we need, but we, we cannot obtain this exactly, right? This is what we need, this uh, first uh, curve. So let's say this is, y of t and this is the perturbation n so this is the curve when you perturb the initial condition you get this solution curve let's denote y tilde of t so if the uh, equation is well posed differential equation is well posed the difference between these two solution curves is bound the axis a c c constancy such that yeah difference between these two solution curves yeah is less than or equal to c times this uh yeah initial perturbation of initial conditions So you need this uh, yeah, well postness to compute the total error, right? To compute the total error. Okay, let's compute the total error. Okay, let's assume, yep, so, so you have local error, right? Local error, so which is 
which is this we computed yeah so this is the local error right to compute the yeah, total error or global error yep so so you have how many yeah one two three and n number of uh yep so errors you have to add Yep, so you are adding those n number of number of yep, this difference of exact difference between exact and the low uh yep, so and the approximation yeah which is less than or equal to yep, so let's say yeah, c times h squared so how many how many terms are there n number of terms times n n right your n is equal to yep so so uh, some constant b minus a divided by h yeah let's plug this one into the real c C H squared. So your M is yeah another constant B minus A divided by H. Then the total error, the total error or global error, error is order of is order of H. Some constant. Another constant time, no, another constant time H. Got it? Actually, that, uh, yeah, this constants, these constant depends on the length of the original subintor. So try to, yeah, so actually, this is the correct, yeah. Uh, calculation. Yep. So try to uh, minimize the origin, uh, original uh, interval or uh, length of the original interval. Otherwise, uh, this term becomes. Uh, yep. So this will large. This becomes large, right? So then your error cannot be bounded bounded uh, by a smaller number. So we have to bound, if you want to bound the error, total error, so you can minimize H. If you minimize H, if you reduce H, you can reduce the total error, right? You can reduce the total error. So this is the error analysis of uh, Euler's method. So if you use Euler's method to find the approximation solutions, so we know that the error is the total error of total error is bounded by total error is order of H. So if you reduce H, you can reduce the total error. So the total error depends on the length of each sub interval, right? So if you reduce the length of each sub interval you can reduce the total error of of this method okay yeah so here the relationship between the total error and the length of each sub interval if you increase the length of each sub interval what happened to the total total error uh, it is also increasing you cannot dominate you cannot uh, yeah, power the error. But if you reduce the length of each sub interval, what happened to the total error? You can yeah reduce. You can bound the total error. You can reduce the total error. Yeah. So when you reduce the length of a sub interval, that what does it mean? So you know the relationship between yeah, h and n and B minus A, the length of original sub, sub uh, original interval divided by number of sub interval. 
If you reduce this means, you increase the number of subintervals. This is fixed, right? Okay. So you have to increase the number of subintervals. That means, yeah, that means you have to break uh, this in, uh, original interval into smaller, smaller. Uh, yeah, break into a lot of subintervals. When you increase the yeah, subintervals, what happened to the computational cost? It will, what happened to the computational cost? It will increase, it will increase, it will increase. When you, so if you have many points in, in, this, uh, in this interval, then computational cost going is going to uh, yeah is going to have, uh, increase yeah yeah so that's uh, if you need accuracy yeah you had if you need accuracy you had to reduce the step size but the computational cost uh, will be increasing but if you need uh, efficiency, yeah, you had to minimize the so you had to minimize the number of sub intervals. If you want to minimize the number of sub intervals, this will be increasing. The length of each sub interval will be increasing if this is uh, reducing, right? Yeah, I will. So then the then the accuracy is uh, your accuracy is, is reducing. Uh, when you increase the efficiency, your accuracy is reducing. When you increase the accuracy, your efficiency is going is going to reduce. It's going to reduce, right? Does this make sense? Okay. So that was the analysis of Euler's method, right? Now we fine tune. So, so Euler's method use only one slope here. Now we add many slopes, right? Many slopes, okay. So in the next uh, method, in the next, uh, yeah, next method is Rangikuta. Second order, let's discuss the second order method. They use two slopes to compute the approximations. Yeah, so you, where uh, is that? This is the Euler. Ah, uh, here, here we go. Yeah, S is the, uh, uh, is, yeah, S is a weighted average of two or more slopes. You can add many slopes. In second order Rangikuta method, they use only two slopes. In fourth order, uh, you use four four slopes in in different places here yeah, at different at different points. Yeah, and this is the fourth order Rangikuta. Right. So you will use only this slope, right? You will use only this slope and then compute this point. But 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 Rangikuta use this slope, that, that, and this to compute this iteration. Okay, so they take the weighted, uh, yeah, they consider a weighted average of many slopes. Yeah, so, yeah, so here, fourth order Euler. And so this is the summary. Yep, so accuracy, order of accuracy is. Yeah, one, one because h to the power one. Uh, yeah, so yeah, global error is yeah all of h, and yeah, so this was the summary. Yeah, so error term, yeah, local error is bounded by this. Yeah, yeah depends on the second node of the solution. Yeah, so if so if the second node is bounded, yeah, you can. Yep, so find this bound. Yeah, so stability. Yeah, this was the summary of their analysis. Yep, so Rangikuta, there are many yeah, methods. 
fifth order rangi kuta, sixth order rangi kuta. In fifth order rangi kuta, they use how many slopes? Five slopes at different places. In sixth order rangi kuta, yeah. So this is high order rangi kuta. Right? They use uh, six uh, slopes at different places. But the most famous one is the fourth order rangi kuta. So fourth order rangi kuta, yeah. So this is the classical, yeah. This is very famous. Most of people use, uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This uh, method, fourth order rangi kuta method, right? So in fourth order rangi kuta method, I think four uh, slopes have been used, I think. Yeah. So four slopes have been used. And yeah, so you can you can uh, yeah you can decide uh, the number of slopes, right? You can decide yeah uh, you can decide that number of slopes. Yeah, so in second order rangi kuta, yeah, there are two slopes. Uh, you see, yeah, this is the second order rangi kuta, right? So they use uh, two slopes. Uh, this is the weighted average of uh, two slope. And and the important thing is, uh, look at the coefficient. Coefficient in front of slope. So one half is the coefficient, right? When you sum that up, uh, you get, uh, let me draw that. Right. Yep, so S is the weighted average slopes yep, so let me use average of slopes yep, so s so this is the method so euler use only one slope here right this is the euler but rangi kuta use yeah many slopes at different points yep, so so this is the second node rangi kuta the right so s is yeah look at this coefficient alpha one alpha one s s one plus alpha two s two so the thing is the sum of alpha is is equal to one right so one half alpha one is one half alpha two also one half so one half plus one half is one. Yes, yes. So they use uh yep. So the second order rangi kuta. So this is T naught. Uh, you know, is unknown function. Also, uh, T one. And and they use uh yeah so they use this slope as well as g naught plus h yeah so they use g naught plus h h h they use some other so. so average they use average of Weighted average of these two slopes, weighted average of these two slopes to compute the next iteration. So I hope this makes sense. Yeah, this was second order Rangi Kuta, fourth order. Yeah, fourth order. Now, when you compute the error analysis, you can see uh, the local error is bounded by. Yeah, h to the c times h to the cube, h cube, right? So the global error is order of h squared. Yeah, this one is much better than uh, the previous uh, Euler's method, right? Because if you, in, so this is the total error. Total error is bounded by some constant times h squared. So earlier, Euler's method total error is bounded by a constant time h, right? If you reduce h step size of each interval small, 
yeah, you can reduce the total error drastically compared to the Euless method. But if you look at the fourth order, fourth order, let's look at the fourth order. Yeah, this is the fourth order. Wrong uh, Gikuta method, right? So they use uh, four slopes at different different points. Yep. So these are the slopes. Yep. So here one slope, and here they consider another two here at the at this place. Yep. And and they consider this slope as well, and take the weighted average. Yeah. So they give uh, alpha one is one over six, alpha two is one third, two over six is one third, alpha three is uh, one third again. So they give more weight uh, on these two slopes. Uh, so what are S2 and S3? Yeah, you can do a small research. Yeah, you can put Alpha one S one plus alpha two S two. You don't need to stick to this uh these coefficients. Alpha three S three and alpha four. Alpha four S four and make sure that the sum of alpha i's is equal to one. Then you can change. These coefficients accordingly, right? Can change. But this is the most uh, famous Rangikuta, uh, and these are the alphas one sixth, uh, one third, one third, and one sixth. Yeah, you can use different alphas so that the sum of all alphas is equal to one. Yeah, you can try out yeah, many, many. Yeah, uh, put 0.5 here, uh, 0.1 here, 0.2 here, and if this is 0.2, what is the sum? One, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, then this should be 0.2. Yeah, like that, you can try out uh, which one uh, you can identify the approximation, um, which one is better. Uh, this one or Rangikuta fourth order method or your one. Yes, yes. This need yeah some uh some yeah yeah ask yeah, so do we need an initial condition? Yes, we need. Otherwise, how how do you know this unknown function? Definitely we have to know this initial condition. With this initial condition, yeah. Yep, so we need this Y naught at least. Yep, otherwise we cannot execute, right? We need this point. Yeah, then we discretize the interval, right? Then, yeah, then, yeah, so I think our uh, demonstrators uh, will discuss this. Yep. So first you have to do this by hand uh, to understand the method, right? So this is the slope at this uh, at this point. Yeah, you can find uh, you have this and this. Uh, let's say this is uh, yeah, y naught. No, this is t naught. Okay, t naught and y naught. Yeah, plug that one into. Here, then you have this slope. Okay, now you uh, this is y naught, not e naught. H is given. User will define that. Yeah. So yeah. So this is y naught. H one. Uh, so you computed that slope times this. Yeah. Then you can compute this slope as well as two. S two. Similarly, as three. S4, then take this weighted average. Yeah, so then you can find this. This is y. If this is yk, uh, yk minus one, this is yk. Got it? Did you understand? Yeah.
Uh, I assume uh, this is the photo the Rangi Guta method. Yep. So, yeah, if you look at their analysis, yeah, look as uh, if you look at uh, yeah, their analysis, you can see that the local error is bounded by you yeah, look at the power h to the power 5. Aha, uh -huh. the total error or global error is bounded by h to the power 4. Yeah, if you reduce, if you reduce step size by a small amount, what happened to the global error or total error? What happened to the global total error? You can reduce the total error drastically compared to second order or Euler's method. That's why this method is very, yeah, well famous, yeah, well famous. Most of people use uh, the fourth order. So when it comes to accuracy as well as the efficiency, yep. Yep, so if you reduce step size, yeah, you can bound the total error drastically here. Yeah, so when you reduce uh, this uh, one little, you can reduce this uh, largely. You can reduce error, total error largely. Yeah, so that's why this one is very famous. Got it? Yeah, decrease like edge. H to the four has uh, absolutely created so uh, you get yeah, so large. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so so when you decide yeah when you decide the interval, make sure that you select a small interval or B. Yep. So so find the solution on this uh, small interval. Yep. So. So, is this clear to you? All methods, all stop recording.